This is section 13.3, part C. We'll take a look at a few more examples of setting up integrals in polar coordinates. In example four, we'd like to find the volume below the surface, z equals 25 minus x squared minus y squared under the radical, and then also above the plane, z equals three. We are going to look at this one in GeoGebra as well, but before we do, this one is one I think we may be able to visualize. If you think about our um, first surface here, if I were to square both sides of that, that would actually be, if I bring all the variables over to the left, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 25. That's just a sphere of radius 5, isn't it? And because z was the positive square root, I think I'm going to get the top half of a sphere of radius 5 there. The plane z equals 3 is just a horizontal plane. So I'm thinking this is going to be a hemisphere sliced through by a horizontal plane. Let's check it out. And again, for right now, I'm using GeoGebra. I've already uh, turned off my first graph here from the last section, and I've made a new graph. z is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared minus y squared. And notice there it is. There's that hemisphere of radius 5. And I'm going to add another graph to this. z equals 3. And there we go. It's slicing through that hemisphere just like I expected. What I'm trying to find is the volume of that cap up there, that piece of the sphere that's above the plane. All right, let's go back. I'm going to make a quick sketch of this just to remind myself what's going on. That was the hemisphere of radius 5. And then we sliced through with that horizontal plane. And I maybe won't draw the entire plane. I'll just kind of show how when we sliced through, it went through at this height 3. And what we're looking for is the volume of this cap on the top of the sphere. So, going to set up my volume equation, I set up my double integral, and again, always the height function. The height in this case is going to go from the top minus the bottom. The bottom's not the xy plane, it's not just zero anymore. So let's think about the top here is the hemisphere. If I'm going to go with polar coordinates, and I think that's a good idea, that would be 25 minus r squared under that radical. And the bottom is going to be the circle where the plane intersected the hemisphere. And remember, that was the plane z equals 3. So when I look at this height function, I'll take the height as the top minus the bottom. The square root of 25 minus r squared minus 3. Because I'm in polar coordinates, my dA will again be r dr d theta. All right, what about the region r? Well, the region r is going to be this circle projected down into the xy plane. So once again, my region in the xy plane, this is x and y, is just a circle. And to find the equation of that circle, I will again just set these z's equal to each other. The circle's the intersection, so it's where these are equal to one another. The square root of 25 minus r squared is equal to 3. So 25 minus r squared is 9. Looks like r squared is going to be 16. And this circle has a radius of 4. So that circle is r equals 4. My radial spoke. I'm already in the region. 
when r is 0, and I exit the region when r is 4. Since I want the entire circle, I have to go all the way around as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Alright, so there's our integral that's going to give us that volume. To do that integral, I'm going to ask myself, can I use the little trick again? And I believe I can. There are no thetas whatsoever in my integrand. So this is a constant with respect to theta. When I integrate, that would give me a multiplier of theta, and I'd end up plugging in the 2 pi. So that's just going to bring a 2 pi down as a multiplier. And that takes care of that whole theta integral. I kind of like to bring my R out in front, otherwise I tend to forget it when I type it into the calculator. There we go. Plugged that into the calculator. And when I did this one, actually I did the integral first. And it came out a little nicer this time. It didn't come out to some really horribly weird decimal. It actually gave me 26 thirds. And so I can give an exact answer to this one. Just multiplying that by 2 pi would give me 52 pi over 3. All right, let's take a look at another volume problem. In example 5, we want the volume just in the first octant. I'm going to be careful with that because that's new, between those two paraboloids, z equals x squared plus y squared, and z equals 15 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared. Again, I think I can kind of guess what this one looks like. We'll verify with technology. But I'm going to try to sketch first this time. z equals x squared plus y squared. That's just our standard paraboloid with its vertex at the origin. This one, 15 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared, it's upside down because of the minuses, and then shifted up 15. So that problem is going to start up here and then open downward. And at some point, it's going to intersect the one that was coming up. So I'm going to end up getting kind of an egg-shaped thing. I probably don't have the proportions exactly right, but I think that's what's going, what it's going to look like. Let's take a moment and take a look at that on GeoGebra as well. Let's see, don't need to see that anymore. And let's see here. Let me delete that one. All right. So we had z equals x squared plus y squared. There's that first paraboloid. And then my next second one was z is equal to 15 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared. And there's that one. I can see the upside down paraboloid starting to happen, but once again I'm really not seeing the vertex of it, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a bit so I can see this a little bit better. Still not seeing the very top. Almost there. There we go. You start to see it. Get a little further. There we go. It's kind of the shadowed part in here. You can see the upside down one in here and the right side up one down at the bottom. All right, let's label these. This would just be z equals r squared. And this top one is 15 minus, if you factor out the two, negative 2, then you'd have the x squared plus y squared left, so 15 minus 2r squared. My volume equation, I'm going to have to integrate my height function. And the height, if you think the top z minus the bottom z, is 15 minus 2r squared. Subtract the bottom, which is just r squared. 
I'm integrating in polar coordinates, so my dA is r dr d theta. All right, we need the region that's going to give us the limits of integration, and that's going to be the circle that forms the intersection between the two paraboloids, but projected down into the xy plane. And once again, I'll figure out what that circle really looks like just by setting my z is equal. I want the intersection. So 3r squared would be 15. r squared is 5. And that circle has radius square root 5. Now, I only wanted the first octant this time. And so when I think about my region of integration, that means I'm going to limit myself to just the first quadrant. So r is going to start from 0, the origin again, and exit at r equals the square root of 5, that circle. But to get just the first octant, again, two dimensions, that means restricting to just the first quadrant, I'll go only from 0 to pi halves. My theta. Alright, um, I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to say our trick does work. There are no thetas in the integrand and I have constant limits of integration. So the d theta part is just going to give me pi halves. That takes care of that. I'm then just going to simplify a little bit. Um, again, this r is still a multiplier. And inside the brackets, I've really got 15 minus 3r squared. And so I'll go ahead and do that. Once again, this one didn't turn out too badly. I kept the pi over 2 out here. And when I did the integral on my calculator, I got 75 fourths. So I can give an exact answer to this one as 75 pi over 8. We will pause there and finish up in the next video.